What's up, people? I'm Shaggy, the opinionated hippie. Today, I'm going to talk about my 10 favorite single discs of the last 30 years of Zappa releases. About a month ago, month and a half ago, when I was reviewing Overnight Sensation, the 50th anniversary box set release, I received that comment. Uh, nope, take down that comment. I said in that release, in that discussion of that release, that one of the discs in that set might be the greatest thing the Zappa Family Trust has released thus far. Then I received that comment right there, uh, which said, hey, seriously, seriously, he wasn't joking around. Um, uh, rank your favorite single discs from the archival releases, from everything that's been released after Frank passed away in 93, um, which is kind of fitting because they started releasing stuff in 94, uh, 2023 we just finished. So we have 30 years of Zappa Family Trust releases to consider in this list. Really excited about this project. Um, I've had it for about a month and a half now. I've been going over this list for a while. I'm pretty confident about these are my 10 favorite discs from the past 30 years. Um, per the comment, uh, I wasn't able to pick more than two discs you know, from any given release. Um, I was surprised going through some releases. Like, I'm like, oh, that's one of my all-time favorite releases. But I can't say that any single disc is the reason. It's really just the fact that there's three discs or four discs. It's it's the, var the variety uh, that maybe ranks it so high. So I was surprised at the stuff that wasn't able to make the list. Um, Halloween 77. Uh, wasn't even eligible because it's on a, uh, I have Halloween 77 on a flash drive. Like what, I have like six shows on a flash drive. I don't know where that flash drive is. I don't have the 3D set, I have a flash drive. So can't really break that down to CDs, a flash drive. I don't know where that is. It was around here somewhere. Uh, but anyways, so yeah, these are my 10 favorite single discs of things the Zappa Family Trust has released after he passed away. I stand by it, but I think the list is kind of disappointing. Like, I think if you've been watching this channel and you're familiar with my thoughts on like Frank Zappa, um, none of these are going to be a surprise. Or maybe they are going to be a surprise. Um, really interested in other people's list. Mr. Cohen did offer to share his list uh, in the comments. So I'm, I'm looking forward to those uh, after you watch this video or before you watch this video. And anybody else who has, who has thoughts on 10 favorite single discs, please share them in the comments below. I would appreciate it. But yeah, let's do this. These are my 10 favorite single disc releases that have been released since Frank Zappa died, passed away in 1993, all the way through 2023. It's now January 2024. The most recent release was the Overnight Sensation one. So that is that is the last one that's eligible for this list. But yeah, I'll talk about each one. I'll put the list up at the end. And then yeah, let me know yours. But here we go. On to number 10. Number 10 is Frank Zappa plays the music of Frank Zappa. This was pretty much, there were a couple other releases prior to this and uh, came out in 96. But this was kind of the first big one of like what was promised, like archival material. It was a single disc. It was kind of overpriced. And for a while I was kind of soured on it just because it had a lot of previously released tracks. It was overpriced, I thought. It does have a real mustache on the cover. Not a real mustache, but you know, got to, you can rub it. Um, but over the years, it has come to be just an absolute. It's in my top 20 of all things. It, I just absolutely love this release. It does happen to only be a single disc. There was nothing about not picking single disc releases. So there are a number of single disc releases on here. Um, yeah, it's Frank playing the guitar. Um, you get a uh, November 22nd, 75 black napkins from, uh, I think, Yugoslavia right? Um, from Yugoslavia. Um, and then that goes into like the Zoot Allures version from, you know, the following winter tour. You get a version of Zoot Allures um, from that winter tour in 76. Uh, you get a blues jam from the 74 band, merely a blues and a, uh, all things fall 74 are perfect. This might've been late summer 74. Um, you get the official Zoot Allures album version um, and then you get a early watermelon in Easter hay from um, 
the 78 tour, February 78, and then you get the official Joe's Garage version. I love this release. It's simple, it's straightforward, it's Frank playing guitar. I mean, Black Napkins, an iconic guitar solo vehicle. Zoot Allures, iconic instrumental with awesome guitar playing at the end that kind of varied throughout the years. Watermelon and Easter Hay, just like this. Dweezil was crying on the tour in which he played that. He gave that little speech. It was about five or six years ago he was playing this as an encore. You give that little speech about Frank and then play the song and you can see Dweezil tear up. Like Watermelon's a special song. But yeah, I absolutely love this release. It's simple, it's straightforward. It's Frank playing the guitar. Um, Yeah, my number 10, Frank Zappa plays the music of Frank Zappa. Number nine is a 2012 release, Halloween 2012. Uh, this is Road Tapes Venue One, disc number two. Uh, this is a live concert show from Vancouver, BC in 1968, August of 1968. Um, and the second disc, the, the second of the two discs is the second half of the show. Um, this is, you know, 68 Mothers. You got Gardner, Sherwood, Preston, Underwood, Estrada, Jimmy Carl Black and Art Tripp. Frank Zappa, of course. Um, and on this disc, the first disc is also fantastic, but for me, the second disc has the songs I love. It's got a really awesome sort of rare performance that as far as releases go that's on there. Um, opens up with The Trouble Every Day, one of those early versions of Trouble Every Day. We get Shortly, Sweet exi exi Exists, Exists? Sweet Exists of Holiday in Berlin, full blown. So we get a version of Holiday in Berlin with a nice guitar solo at the end. As the guitar solo sort of fades out, we drop in a pound for a brown. We get a pound for a brown that goes into Sleeping in a Jar as it did in this era. And I love the way they mess with Sleeping in a Jar and have fun with that. Then we get an oh in the sky. Oh, awesome falsetto singing by the bass player singing oh in the sky. Pretty sure it's a bass player singing that. Um, and then for the encore, I'm pretty sure this is the one encore. Maybe it's the, I think it's the encore. Um, we get, they cover uh, Varese's Octandre. And it's just like, he's like, hey, we got a great audience. You guys have been fantastic. We're going to play something that most people get upset by. He tells I think this is the one where he tells a little story about, about Varese. Um, and they play Octandre. And it's just Frank at his most Frank. You know, playing a Varese song in a rock audience after a really great rock show. Absolutely fantastic. Then, just as sort of the cherry on the top of the disc, they drop in a King Kong. Um, a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic release. Um, I have talked about all these releases more in depth elsewhere. If you want to know more, these are just brief snapshots. But yeah, it's a great release. And of the two discs, I think that is my favorite disc. And I do listen to that more than the other. But yeah, it, it's absolutely fantastic. But that's my number nine, the second disc of Road Tapes Venue One. Number eight is Imaginary Diseases. Came out in 2006. This is a single CD release of material from the 1972 Petit Wazoo Tour. Um, seven tracks. This is his sort of mini version of his big band, his not quite so big band, in which he had what? One, two, three, four, five, six uh, brass and, and woodwind players, a slide guitarist, awesome bass and drummer, and then Frank, of course, on guitar and vocals, conducting the whole mess. Um, for this one, we get audience, which is like an opening sort of noise type thing, spelled O-D-D-I-E-N-T-S. That drops into a very short version of Rollo, Rollo, um, the song that would be tacked on the end of uh, Don't Eat the Yellow Snow eventually. We get this awesome Bend to Kansas City in A minor jam that's just blistering. We get Farther Oblivion. We get the full 16 minute Farther Oblivion suite, which contains parts of Gregory Peckery, contains a bebop tango, contains the background music of Hookamonga, plus a whole plethora of solos. Uh, we get DC Boogie. Yeah, pretty much says it all right there, which is kind of a two-part jam. Second half being this awesome boogie. Um, could have been a ballad, but no, they voted for boogie. Um, we get Imaginary Diseases, a really kind of hyperactive, um, kind of, yeah, just really upbeat, sort of awesome instrumental jazzy type tune. And then it closes out with another jam called Montreal, which is from, of all places, Montreal. Yeah, it's the Petit Wazoo. What more could we want than more from this band? Oh, wait, there was more from this band. I wonder where that's going to end up on the list. But this one, I think the 
this is the second of the two releases? I think this is the first of the two releases. Um, yeah, it is my number eight. I wonder what number seven is going to be. Number seven is Little Dots, the second of the two releases of this uh, Petit Wazoo Tour. Again, a single CD release. Um, easy to put on here. Um, it was not hard to make this decision. Um, this came out in 2016, so about 10 years after the original first one. Uh, again, we got seven songs. Um, this one is a little more jammier, not quite as many songs, I don't think. Maybe there are. I don't know. Um, we get, opens up with a cosmic debris, a pretty early cosmic debris. Uh, then we get two and three are a track called Little Dots, and we get the first part and the second part, both around 12 minutes long. The whole thing's like 24 minutes long. Um, this features very prominently um, Gordon on drums and Parlato on bass. They have kind of like a opening jam session in the beginning. This very kind of crazy, almost Ornette Coleman free jazz type kick crazy thing. And then we get a whole bunch of solos. I think we get an awesome Tony Dran slide solo in here. Just some fantastic playing. Uh, we get the full version of Rollo with the lyrics following next. Um, with, yeah, wait till you hear those. Um, we get Kansas City Shuffle, which is like a jam from Kansas City. And then we get a two-parter from Columbia, South Carolina uh, from November 72, uh, which is Columbia SC Part 1 and Columbia SC Part 2, which is more of just this band jamming and doing absolutely fantastic things. And yeah, rising to the occasion. Anytime Frank's like, hey, you solo, they're like soloing like their life depends on it. And it's all just spectacular. Yeah, an easy pick. My number seven, Little Dots, more Petit Wazoo stuff. Number six is Disc One from Waka Wazoo. This has been out for just over a year right now. Came out in December of uh, 2022. Yeah, so just over a year. We're 2024, but it's January. Um, and yeah, this is a whole bunch of material from the Waka Wazoo sessions, plus you get some George Duke material on here. But disc one is all alternates and outtakes of seven songs that are on Waka or Wazoo. And these are all absolutely amazing. And I would argue that the way they're sequenced and particularly, particularly uh, your mouth opens and there's a little bit more talking in your mouth and like, um, who is it? I think it's Sal Marquez and whoever the female vocalist is on there. They're kind of doing some back and forth going at each other and it sets it up really, really well. Um, it just, it's absolutely perfect. Um, who is the female vocalist? I got to find her name to give her a shout out because she is absolutely awesome on here. Chris Peterson? Yeah, Chris Peterson, I think is who it is. Uh, but they're kind of going at each other and then we finally get into a really awesome version of Your Mouth. We get an alternate take of Big Swifty that is fantastic. Uh, we get an alternate take of Eat That Question called Minimal Art, Blessed Relief. Uh, we get a outtake version of the Grand Wazoo called Think It Over. We get For Calvin and His Next Two Hitchhikers and we get Waka Jawaka. And it's just, I mean, what a fantastic group of songs, their alternate performances from two of his greatest albums. The sound is fantastic. The energy is fantastic. The band is fantastic. Yeah, it's a great box set. And I think this lead off CD is just like, sets the tone for the awesomeness that will follow. But yeah, easily uh, this, yeah. It's only been out for a year and a half, but I, I don't see this changing anymore. I still absolutely love this disc. Um, but that would be disc one, of the 2022 release, Waka Wazoo. There's four discs. Uh, there's a live show included at the end. You get some more alternate takes on disc two. You get some George Duke demos. Uh, Frank helped produce one of his albums. You get some outtakes from that. Frank plays guitar on a couple of those. So it's overall a fantastic box set. But disc one, man, disc one, ah, perfect. Yeah, that's number six. That's number six. Number five is the second disc of Chicago 78. This came out in 2016. It is a complete live show from Chicago, September 29th, 1978. This is Vinny's first band, uh, Barrow's in the band. We got Mars, we got Wolf, we got Man, um, uh, Denny Wally on slide guitar, Ike Willis on uh, guitar and vocals, a very aggressive tour, a lot of very aggressive energy. Uh, the Death Vamps of Easy Meat and City of Tiny Lights first pop up here. There was one more song that had a Death Vamp. I don't think it was played on this tour. Um, but the second disc on this 
Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Imagine being at the show. And this is how, it, this is the second half. We get a little house I used to live in. For this tour, Frank arranged Ian Underwood's piano solo as a full band experience, a pretty mellow full band experience, but pretty intense. Um, that usually led into some sort of like jammy type thing. Uh, earlier on the winter tour for 78 with a slightly different band they would drop the shake your booty tango at the end of this here it's just the keyboardists get a chance to solo and then when it's frank's turn to solo we just go off into a whole other track whole a bunch of other weird stuff it's just a jam of like chaos um it's called paroxysmal paroxysmal uh paroxysmal i can't spell it parox and then ismal like abysmal paroxysmal splendor um there's some weird talking, some sort of Gregory Peckery in jokes. We get an I'm a beautiful guy jam. We get some cruise slot with the lyrics. We get Frank just going off like crazy. It's just seven and a half minutes of a band just having a fantastic time. And it's just, there's like some vocal jokes and there's songs you recognize that Frank hasn't fully formed yet. And there's like the germs of ideas. And I'm sure the, the Gregory Peckery stuff is here because maybe they were in the studio putting the final touches on it or something. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, an amazing jam, which is followed by Yo Mama. It's followed by Yo Mama. Fantastic Yo Mama. Nice long Yo Mama. Awesome Yo Mama. Then we get Magic Fingers, a song Frank should have played way more often in his career. That goes into Don't Eat the Yellow Snow. Um, we get a really nice, uh, we get an audience participation part in which Frank is calling people out kind of harshly. It's pretty amusing. I, I don't think it's quite as epic as the poetry from stage one, but it's a really good Don't Eat the Yellow Snow. I love the 78 live versions of this. I think these are the best versions of this, 78 and 79. I think they're better than the 74 versions or 73 versions. This to me is like the perfect live Don't Eat the Yellow Snow. Uh, then we get a Strictly Genteel, and then we close out with just a blistering Fall 78 Black Napkins. We get guitar solos, we get great songs, we get audience participation, we get something like Strictly Genteel, we get the shortest song is two and a half minutes, but it's Magic Fingers, and they should have played that way more often. A perfect disc, just an absolutely, absolutely perfect disc. Um, my only complaint, um, Cyborg is at the end of disc one and it's only like four and a half minutes long. They could have thrown Cyborg on this one. It would have made the first disc shorter, but man, you throw Cyborg on here. I love these live Cyborgs. This jumps up a spot maybe. Maybe it makes it a four. Maybe it makes it a three, probably not. But anyways, yeah, it's a good release. Fantastic release. But disc two, it's like a Grand Slam. And the rest of these are all Grand Slam. Frank's hitting Grand Slams from here on out. But yeah, that is my number five, Chicago 78, disc two. Number four, we're back to the road tapes. This is venue two, but it's disc one this time. I went back and forth a while on this one. One of my favorite discs. This is from a live 1973 show, the short little late summer tour that Frank did uh, with Underwood, Humphrey, Duke, Fowler. Ponty still is around. And I think Ponty, as much as I love Ponty early on, I think he jumps to the next level for this tour. And he's it's just absolutely amazing. Fowler on trombone and Underwood on clarinet and synthesizer. Um, absolutely amazing show. Um, but I think... What I like about disc one is the journey, the progression from the first song all the way to the end. It's just so perfect and so complete. And it just, it just, everything just gels perfectly. So uh, disc one opens up with the Eric Dolphin. We get an introduction. We get the Eric Dolphin Memorial Barbecue, that short little snippet that the 73 band did. That went into Kung Fu, a new track for this year. We get a Penguin in Bondage, an Exercise 4, um, which is like a variation on dog breath and dog breath variations. It kind of ties in a lot of the themes from that. We go into the dog breath. We have the dog breath variations. We have Uncle Meat. And then this whole run of awesome songs ends with a really hyper kinetic, crazy version of Redunzel. Fantastic. Great start. Great run of songs. Whole thing's about six, eight, ten, Eleven and a half, fourteen, like twenty minutes of music, twenty-one, just straight through without stopping. Then we get a Montana and seventy-three Montanas. I'm sorry, seventy-three Montanas. Like the the jams are going to get funkier as we go into seventy-three and seventy-four. But those guitar solo breaks and what the band is doing, fantastic. 
Then we get the George Duke intro to Dupree's Paradise, which on this is called Your Teeth and Your Shoulders, and sometimes your foot goes like this, slash pajama prelude, because in the course of this 10-minute craziness, we get a little pajama people jam, little Frank saying the lyrics to that. Um, then we drop into a full 60-minute version of Dupree's Paradise, one of my all-time favorite songs, and then the whole thing ends up with some sort of like... Uh, improv, you know, Frank leading the audience to do something and they do this sort of finish, they write a finish hit single, single and there's a jam part and there's a dun-dun-dun part and it's all crazy and it's made up on the spot and it's improvisation and it's Frank doing what Frank does better than anything else, just giving a little more free reign to his band while at the same time conducting them through all these mad paces. 73 minutes of perfect, perfect music from one of Frank's best bands ever. Yeah. I love it. That's my number four. Disc one, Road Tapes, volume two. Number three is another relatively recent, 2022, June 22, so it's about a year and a half old. Um, Zappa Erie, disc number two. These were three shows, all from the Erie, Pennsylvania area. One from Edinburgh, Pennsylvania on May 8th, 74. One from Erie, Pennsylvania, November 12th, 74. And then another one from Erie, 11, 12, 1976. And my disc is the second half, the one that I'm picking, is the second half of the 5874 show. It's one of my favorite releases of all time. I think all of these discs, or at least the the 474 discs are all near perfect. The 76 stuff is good, but it, it's 76. And this is, they managed to squeeze 15 songs on here because this disc contains the entire sort of freak out medley of songs that this band did. Um, and then it closes out with a couple more older mother songs. And then we get two of the greatest prog jams, guitar solo sort of proggy instrumental solo jams Frank has ever released or maybe ever played. Not ever, but maybe up there. It's amazing stuff. Uh, we get a nice long Dupree's Paradise to open. It's just the Dupree's Paradise. Uh, the Montana and the George intro that precedes it are on the end of disc one. So we really just start with the Dupree's Paradise, but that's kind of cool to experience it without the George intro, even though that segue, that that long intro, and then when you get to the segue, ah, uh, it's so perfect, but it's still a great Dupree's Paradise. Then we go in the medley. We get a little two minutes of it can happen here, including the weird, you know, whoa, instrumental ambient noise section. Uh, we get a Hungry Freak's Daddy. You're probably wondering why I'm here. How could I be such a fool? I ain't got no heart. I'm not satisfied. Wowie zowie. Let's make the water turn black. Harry, you're a beast. The Orange County Lumber Truck and Oh No. And the crazy thing about all those, because even though it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, kind of 11 songs, just kind of back to back to back to back to back to back to back with Oh No eventually leading into the epic Son of Orange County. I don't know, Frank does a good job of mixing it up, of giving like different instruments, different parts, and kind of like we're gonna attack it this way and do it different this way. And it just, it flows really well. And it's really neat to hear this amazing band sound this good and play these songs. Especially when you know that at the end of it, we're gonna drop into a 12 minute Son, Son of Orange County in which Frank is just playing some of the greatest guitar of his life. Some cats fighting outside my window. Hear that? They're screaming at each other and it's fighting. Uh, it doesn't sound, it's too early for anything else. Ah, so we get an awesome Sunday from Orange County. That goes into an amazing More Trouble Every Day that just is like nine minutes long. It's just amazing guitar solos. And then we close out the entire show with a Camarillo Brillo, which has that awesome George Duke energy at the end. Yeah, yeah. 15 songs of just perfection. Kind of the opposite of almost everything else on this list. Everything else on this list is guitar solo heavy and jam heavy. This is the one disc I'm like, yeah, give me these songs by this band, especially if you're gonna you're gonna finish out with these guitar solos at the end. Yeah. Zappa Erie is a great release, and I think this is the best, best disc in there. My number three. Well, it might not be the single greatest single disc release, but it's number two still after a month and a half of listening to it. And that is disc three of the Overnight Sensation 50th Anniversary box set. Disc three is music from the Hollywood Palladium. 
continued. It's the rest of the show. We open up with the cosmic debris. I love cosmic debris uh, from this era. I think they're all fantastic. Oh, and this show is from uh, 73. It's from April, March 73, March 23rd, 1973. Uh, still not as not as funky and, and awesome as it would be by 74, but I like these early Cosmic Debris. Uh, then we get an introduction of the dynamic Sal Marquez as its separate track. Then we drop into a big Swifty that's like, yeah, yeah, that's it, big Swifty. Marquez gets a solo in this. The, the solos that follow have to be great because you got to follow Marquez. Yeah, give, give me... Give me this 20 more times. Um, then Frank introduces I'm the Slime, which at this point is called The Curse of the Zomboids. Uh, and he introduces it as the successor to Willie the Pimp. It kind of did not become that, especially by the time it actually landed on the actual album. But this live version, you get a nice kind of good feeling on the slime. And then we go into a solo section. The solo section kind of feels like Willie the Pimp. Frank kind of goes off for a while. The tempo, the tone kind of shifts and we go to a different section. The tempo, the tone kind of shifts. We go to a different section. I think we have like three different sections before the solo wraps up at like six minutes. But not the solo, the song is six minutes. But it should have gone on longer. The energy is good. The vibe is good. The rhythm section is fantastic. The energy is good. It just seems like this could have been Willie the Pimp. Like you could easily add four more minutes of guitar on this, Frank. Keep playing. Don't stop. What are you doing? Go. And so, yeah, good introduction. I, I just don't think I'm the slime lived up to that hype. We get a 24 minute, don't you ever wash that thing. Yeah, yeah. You wanna hear everybody just go at it? Listen to this. This is fantastic. That eventually goes off into a uh, percussion jam with Frank in the percussion section just jamming it away for like five minutes. Then that eventually goes into a 12 and a 13 minute something called the Palladium, Palladium Jam, which is just, again, Frank letting the reins loose, giving people a chance to solo and jam and throwing in ideas and thinking on his feet and being spontaneous. And that just goes on and on and on for like 13 glorious minutes. Yeah. Yeah. It's easily, I think, one of the greatest single single discs in the entire thing uh, since Frank has passed away, since 1994 that have been released. It is fantastic. And this entire box set is fantastic. So it, it's not like it's outshining everything and like it's got some competition, but it, it, yeah, man. And there's only one, one that I think is better. And if you have been watching this channel, you probably know what it is if you're familiar with the releases. It should come as no surprise to anybody what I think the single greatest disc released by the Zappa Family Trust and or Frank and his Gale and whoever since he passed away. It is. Number one is. And number one, more summer, fall, 1974. It's the, a token of his extreme soundtrack. Um, my favorite band, the summer, fall, 74. This is Ruth, Duke, uh, Napoleon, uh, Fowler, Tom, Thompson, Chester, Frank. Um, they'd been playing together for about a year at this point with Chester joining the band in uh, uh, fall of 73, late summer of fall 73. Um, you know, the rest of them had been together for like almost two years playing and just developing this awesome chemistry. Um, yeah, uh, I just love it. My all-time favorite, maybe my all-time favorite, one of my all-time favorite, probably my all-time favorite, meh, maybe. One of my top 10, for sure a top five, post 93, definitely a top 10, all of Frank Solo. Uh, the Florentine Pogo, Pogan Solo on here, I just think is rock and roll at its best. The energy, the way Frank concludes it, the way he just never stops shredding in the entire thing. Plus it's in Florentine Pogan, which is a fantastic song. Uh, we open up with the Dog Breath uh, Variations, Uncle Me. Sound is fantastic. What a fantastic song. Every release could have that song. I would never get bored. We get a Montana. Again, Montana's in this area. That jam section, that solo section. The energy is so fantastic. We get the Earl of Duke without a Dupree's Paradise, which is essentially jo uh, George doing his keyboard thing and all that crazy stuff. Uh, we get a Florentine Pogan. Uh, and then we get a Stinkfoot. Interesting little Stinkfoot. We get an awesome Pygmy Twilight. This is, we're like, these are these heavy Pygmy Twilights. The Summer Fall 74 Pygmy Twilights. That's the jam right there. Uh, that goes into a really long room service. The room service might be a little long. 12 minutes of room service is a lot, 
but there's a groove going on there and the band does sound pretty fantastic. Uh, we get an Inca Rhodes, fantastic Inca Rhodes. What a fantastic song. Uh, an Oh No, Son of Orange County with a pretty awesome solo in the Son of Orange County. A More Trouble Every Day with some more really good guitar energy. And then the whole thing closes out with a bum, bum, ba, ba, token of my extreme to close out. As this band usually opened and closed most shows with sort of a little the musical introduction and conclusion of a token of my extreme. Yeah. One of my favorite releases of all time. I absolutely love this thing. Uh, was recorded in 74, came out in 2013. Way too long. It should have been released far before that. Um, but yeah, absolutely amazing. My favorite single disc. When I saw that comment, I knew what number one was going to be, even though I said the number that Overnight Sensation stuff might be number one. I knew this was going to take the cake, which is not a surprise and it might be disappointing, but I'm sorry. I'm sticking to my guns. That's my number one token of his extreme the soundtrack. That's what they look like right there in writing. For those of you who have really short memories um, or just want to see them in writing because, you know, visual learners and all. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Those are my 10 single favorite discs from the past 30 years of Frank Zappa releases. Um, most of them are jam heavy. One of them has a lot of songs. Um, and we got a lot, of, a lot of 70s, 72, 73, 74. That's maybe overrepresented on that list. But that's not to be surprised, right? We have that. What do we have? I didn't even think of counting. So number one is 70. We got 74, 73, 74, 73. Uh, 72, 72, 72. Yeah, uh, like what? what um, seven of those are all from those eras. 72, 73, and 74. And we got a 178, uh, 168, and then one that's kind of a little all over the place. Yeah. I wanted to pick something later, like a Halloween 81 or something. There were some good tracks on there, but I couldn't find a single disc that, that outshone any of those. Something from Halloween 77 might have, had it been released on CDs and I had, you know, an actual 70 minute block of music I could pick, but it wasn't, so it didn't. But that's what I got. Let me know your list. I would love to know what your favorite discs are. I will check those out. If I, especially if I think I disagree with you, I will go back and try to figure out why you put that on your list. Cause you know, as Abid from Community once said, I like liking things. So yeah, if I have a chance to turn around and like something, I will. Anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the comment, Mr. Cohen. I appreciate it. Um, it's been fun. Uh, it's helped me sort of, again, once again, figure out what it is I love and I don't love about Frank. And I love 72, 73, and 74. And I, yeah, unapologetically, uh, easily my favorite era. So yeah. All right. Thanks, people. Subscribe, like, share, comment, and go listen to Frank Zappa. Go listen to a token of his extreme and appreciate the awesomeness. All right, talk to you later.